Happy Thursday evening as we are back in it. Jack Veltri and Joe Machika here bringing you guys foul balls, GC Live foul balls again on this Thursday night. Uh, big weekend of baseball ahead of us. Jack South Carolina um, did well in Gainesville last weekend. You were there. Um, we'll get a breakdown of that. And then obviously the Arkansas series. But um, first, just happy to be back, Jack. Yeah, man, I'm happy to have you back on, man. It's it was uh, it was fun hosting the show for two weeks. Had some good guests on and stuff uh, to kind of make up for your uh, the big loss of you, man. I mean, dude, you were you were busy. First off, let's hear about your master's trip real quick. How was it, man? Oh yeah, that match was great. Um, you know, it was a good week as always. Shout out to the South Carolina Sport and Entertainment Management Department for uh, always making that happen. Uh, it was a cap off of my three years work in the tournament, and who knows what what next year's in store. But uh, it was it was good, good time. But yeah, and happy happy to be back with Central, and we got plenty of baseball to talk about as number two, Arkansas comes in town this week. Um, Jag. It's it's a big weekend, and you're, you're South Carolina baseball. You're coming off another big one um, down in Gainesville. Yeah, um, yeah. Just it's been nonstop busy with baseball, like you said. Um, I literally just got back. I was on the road for the last five days um, before yesterday. Actually, yeah, including yesterday. So um, yeah, it was busy, but a good time. Uh, South Carolina had a good uh, road trip where they went four and one, um, and I count. The midweek game, obviously, in Charleston against Citadel, and that even includes last week um, when they faced UNC and picked up a big win there. So they've looked a lot better lately. Um, Gainesville, I think, was a good uh, good test for them to win a road series against Florida, a good team with, obviously, Jack Caglione kind of owns them and stuff. So um, very good team there, but South Carolina was able to go in and pick up a big series victory, and um, I think your offense looked good. Your pitching was – a little hit or miss. I think it could have been a lot better, but I think this weekend's going to be a real telltale of uh, where everything's at. But you're 37 games into the season, and I think you're on the right track. I think you're in line to potentially host a regional. Um, I think I was talking with the 107.5 game uh, guys today. They were kind of saying that um, looking like a 15 seed right now uh, to host uh, a regional, which is exactly where they were last year. So as long as, as long as they continue to keep trending upwards, I think they're going to be able to, you know, maybe not even just be a, a hosting seed. Look at it as a national seed, which means they'd be a top eight seed, and uh, you're in line to host a super regional if you get that far. So that's still a long ways to go, but I think they're on the the right track to do that as of right now. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, the offense was back, and obviously, Jack, you brought up the pitching. There's certainly, um, you know, some pitching storylines heading in this weekend um, as Coach Kingston broke today. At his pressure, you were there. We'll, we'll get into that as well. But yeah, really good five games, uh, really good stretch for for South Carolina there. You know, way to get things back on track. You're still ranked, right? Um, you know, and and now you're again in position uh, to to host a, a regional, which is huge. And now, right, you you can only go up from here, right? You can certainly go down, but I think the way that this team is playing right now, um, at least sh- certainly in the short term, uh, has been promising and. Again, you just want to find consistency at this point in the year because there's still a lot of big series left. But um, you know, one of the bigger ones coming up this week. But uh, yeah, you're finding your groove at the right time, and and you know, a lot gets talked about for this schedule being a gauntlet for the South Carolina baseball squad. But um, to do what you did in Gainesville is a, a pretty darn good start, and and it was good getting things back on track after A and M. Definitely, and I think the big thing with the offense was. Uh, that you saw a lot of guys play really good. I think the line at one through nine did a solid job. And uh, Will Tippett, for one, he's been a guy that's been swinging the bat a lot better lately. I think he's six for his last 15. And I know, what's the uh, the Tippett tribe? Is that is that what it's called? Chief, yeah, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's been swinging the bat a lot better lately. Um, King had been talking about how he's going to be, you know, he's confident in the fact that, uh, you know, his, he'll be able to turn the bat around to catch up with his glove. And look, no one wanted to believe it um, when that when he said that and everyone just doubted him. And look at what happened, man. He had a good weekend against Florida. It carried over into uh, Tuesday's win over the Citadel where he goes two for three with the home run that ends up making the difference in the game. And his glove continues to be very sharp. And he's still quick on the base pass, leads the team in steals. So the fact that your nine hole hitter is doing as well as he is right now from yeah. just the right side of the plate, he stops switch hitting right for right now. It really works well. And then that carries over with the top of the order with Colmacina now leading off. 
Um, I think the lineup is a lot more balanced. Uh, I think I, I love Messina um, hitting in that leadoff spot because he's typically a guy against the base. He's not a quick dude. Obviously, he's not known for his speed, but the fact that he's able to you know have good a good eye at the plate, read pitch as well, and uh, get on base, it's all good. So I think the lineup one through nine looking good right now. And they had a good weekend against uh, uh, Florida, so it'll uh, hopefully yeah. it'll carry over this weekend. Well, certainly. I agree with leading off Moose, right? It's kind of similar to what the Phillies are doing with Kyle Schwarber, just pop it off spot. And then Moose can get on base as well. And I mean, while we're on the topic, um, you know, he's getting nominated for the Buster Posey or he's in, you know, making, you know, his rounds for the awards. So um, shout out to Moose for that. But yeah, I, I like it. And again, he's got a pretty good eye. And, you know, when you when you have a guy like that, that just loves baseball, that just calls Santa does, right? To lead off a game, lead off series for you. Um, at the point, I think it, it, it's been good for this team. Right? And I think, you know, away in Gainesville, uh, you know, this team just generated momentum throughout the weekend. They, they started fast, right? 10 to three on Friday. Um, and that's kind of what you want to see here at home too. Um, that's, that's how you, you know, got, got to Vanderbilt a little bit, even though um, those games were a little different, but uh, you know, I think against Arkansas, it's, it's, it's different, right? They, they were series on the road. Now they're coming back for a little bit of home cooking. I think that's, it's exactly what you need um and and at the right time coming into such a big series like this but um all in all i mean shout out to moose again i, I really like what they're doing and then tip it as well um you know certainly earning his keep again um that's one thing that these these veterans in the lineup too are doing as soon as people you know start to doubt they they certainly are good at you know picking themselves right back up right I, we haven't really seen too big of sides from anybody um this season um and and so all credit to him right I, I think that's really hard to do in baseball and get out of a slide and a, and a slump hitting wise um so a lot of these guys have been able to back it up and when the doubts have come so tip it being one of those and, and moose ever more so in the, in the leadoff spot yeah totally it's it's definitely what you need from this offense and um getting into the pitching a little bit um you know i think we'll we'll, we'll just jump right into the rotation right because um yeah yeah Kingston, obviously today, uh, you know, I, I asked him right away, what's what's the deal with the pitching staff this weekend? And, you know, I was kind of expecting him to say, like, uh, Jones, good, Becker, which is what he threw out last weekend. And honestly, I wouldn't have blamed him for doing that because I think those are veteran yep. guys that can go out there and pitch. And uh, I think it was just one of those weekends where Florida was kind of uh, – I mean, Florida's a great offense. And they really got to Matthew Becker. They did get to, to Ty Good as well. But I think Good managed to make his start a little better than it really uh, was. Um, but I think I wouldn't have blamed him for doing that. I think those are two veteran, veteran guys that can go out there and definitely have good outings. We saw them do it out of relief against uh, Texas A&M and I think Arkansas. You could have made a case for them doing it again. But this weekend, I mean, he's I mean Kingston's throwing you know everything at the wall and just just trying something new. And I don't blame him at all with starting Roman Kimball on Friday, um, Eli Jones Saturday. And then TBA on Sunday. And with Sunday, it really just comes down to who you have available. And I think your three yeah. pre, your three options are, are going to end up being Matthew Becker, Ty Good, or Tyler Pitzer probably. It really just depends yep. on how you use them. Now, the reasoning behind each of these decisions I feel like makes sense, right? Because people want to say, yeah. oh, oh, is Friday just a punt game with Hagen Smith on the mound and stuff? I don't think so because Roman Kimball has been pitching very well lately. And when you look at his numbers – I mean, Kingston was right saying that, you know, opponents are only hitting about 169 against Kimball this year, despite his struggles uh, from time to time in the, you know, in the in the in between of being being in the weekend rotation to start the year. And then to now where he's you know, he's kind of overcoming his command struggles a little bit. He's pitching a lot better at relief. He's kind of earned his right to get back into this weekend rotation and see what he can do. I think he's built for this. He's proven that he can go out there and pitch against the best. And, um, yeah, I mean, look, Kingston said he has the best stuff on the team. Um, for a guy that hasn't pitched tremendously this year, that's some high praise right there. And I think Rowan's probably going to yeah. go out there and shove tomorrow. And, look, uh, it's not going to be easy going up against Hagen Smith, one of the premier pitchers in, in college baseball, and probably going to be a top-10 pick in the MLB draft later this year. But the fact that, you know, it's going to be a tough matchup, but I think Roman's got more than enough to go out there and do it. As for Jones on Saturday – um, I also asked uh, King about that. What's kind of the, the the deal with that? And I, in my head, I'm thinking like, okay, is it maybe something where you don't want to pin him up against Hagen Smith in a game where you could potentially lose? 
or is it just something else? And it was something else. It had nothing to do with Hagen, actually. It was more of just Eli gives you the most length out of the rotation, and mm -hmm. he gives you the best chance to go out there and win. So in a, in a scenario where if you pitch Eli Friday and you lose that game and it's not because he pitched well, um, then you're in a position where you potentially try to lose – you could lose the series. But if you pitch Jones Saturday and he gives you your best stuff, you're not going up against Taken Smith. You have a chance to win that game, and then it leads into Sunday where it could be a winner-take-all. It could be you're going for a sweep. Who knows? I think South Carolina is setting themselves up for success with this weekend rotation, and by no means are they punting this uh, first game tomorrow night at all. Yeah. No, I firmly agree with you there, Jack. I mean, I think Roman Kimball is a guy that's very high energy, right? You're going to need it against – Hagen Smith in, in, in Arkansas. And I think, you know, Eli Jones giving you the most length um, is the perfect explanation for Saturday. I think it's it's a very smooth move, right? Because Friday, depending on what happens Friday, it it generates, you know, how the, the series is going to swing. The rest of the series is going to swing. Um, we'll win that game or lose it, right? Um, so I think, you know, Kimball giving him the full faith to go out here on a Friday night in Founders Park, one of the biggest series of the year um, in college baseball, I think it's huge for his confidence, right? Um, and and for a guy like Roman Kimball, I think that's all you need to tap in at the nasty stuff, right? You're under the lights. It's it's all of the hype and and more that you need to get into it um, for starting pitcher. And then I mean, Jack, we've talked about it before. Roman Kimball's best attributes is just get the way he gets into games, right? Uh, you know, he he brings a little bit of that swagger, a little bit of that mentality uh, that you know Ganey brings just that fire. Um, and I think you need a guy like that on, on Friday to, to really set the tone um, when you have such a big daunting opponent like Arkansas and Megan Smith. And I mean, these bats are really, really, really good for Arkansas. Um, so, I mean, you, you need a guy that, that thinks he's better than everyone else. Uh, and obviously every, every starting pitcher for South Carolina goes out there with that mentality, but Roman Kimball, uh, you know, it's, he's one of one um, and he will be Friday night. Um, so I, I think it's it's the perfect nod to give to a guy at, at this point in the season where, you know, you need all of the fire and momentum uh, in game one that you can get. So um, why not send out the firecracker himself, Roman Kimball? Um, and, you know, I think Jones on, on Saturday is a, a great play. You know, TBA is, is also, you know, a good, good option too because, again, you have a lot of guys that can start that game. It just depends on, you know, matchups out of the bullpen um, and what you like, what you see. Um, because whoever – whatever starting – pitcher comes out of the bullpen um is most likely you know going to 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 come out again at, at some point right so if you're going to get used out of the bullpen you're probably going to get used more than once um depending on how long they go so um we'll see how see who they end up using on you know friday out of the bullpen and then uh, obviously it leaves questions for saturday because you got jonesy going as well so um I, I think we'll get an answer friday um but but we'll see i, I like where the rotation's at jack all in all yeah and the good thing with Starting Jones on Saturday, that I forgot to mention, is that, you know, let's say um, Roman Kimball gives you like four innings on Friday or something. It's not going according to plan. Well, the good news is you have three other guys, like I mentioned before, Becker, uh, Good, and Pitzer, that can come in in relief and give you some innings. And I think that is really good that you don't have to necessarily like worry about, you know, burning through a bunch of your young guys in the bullpen. You can go out there and use – one of those other potential starters to piggyback off of someone that might not have a great outing. Now, the ideal plan would be, and I think Mark mentioned this earlier, is that you know you maybe use one of those potential spot starters um, in Friday's game out of the bullpen, and then Saturday you hope that your bullpen would be um, in a position where they don't have to be used Saturday because hopefully Jones goes out in there and gives you six, seven quality innings, maybe more. And that way you can just bridge it to maybe Ganey and Veach to end that game on Saturday. And then you're all refreshed for Sunday with whoever starts. So I think it really does play well for South Carolina. And again, it's going to it's gonna come down to how this offense hits with Arkansas. I think these teams are very well matched up. Um, you know, obviously Arkansas is ranked higher. They're a great team, but I mean, look, we mentioned, we know, we know Joe, it's, it's tough going into Founders Park and uh, winning a series. So We'll see what happens, but I think South Carolina is in a good spot uh, for this weekend. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. I think, you know, with the baseball that they're playing at the moment, um, it's it's exactly what you want going into such a big series like Arkansas. Uh, Jack, switching over, kind of looking at Arkansas, um, who are, you know, just some of the guys to watch. Obviously, we talked about um, you know, starting Friday, but just who are some of the bats in this lineup that you got your eye on? And then 
Um, obviously, the pitching staff is, is no joke either. Yeah, this is a very, very good team. Uh, 32 and 5 on the year, 27 and 1 from home. Um, they're 3 and 3 on the road and 2 and 1 neutral sites. So, uh, this Arkansas team, despite how good they are, doesn't have a ton of uh, experience playing on the road this season, but um, that doesn't mean that they're, you know, not ready for this kind of moment. I think when it comes to this offense, they're not a power heavy team, right? They don't even have a guy um, on this squad that, you know, has more than, uh, you know, nine homers this year. So everyone's kind of well balanced in that aspect. Uh, they're going to put, they're going to put the ball in play a ton. And I wonder if South Carolina's defense is going to be able to step up to that task and play pretty solid, clean baseball out there. Cause if they do, then I think you're in a, in a really good spot um, because that means your pitchers are putting the ball, you know, you know, working with the ball in play, and your defense is backing up well behind you. Uh, but this Arkansas team does not strike out a ton. Um, you know, some of the guys that really stand out to me, Peyton Stovall, uh, you know, 571 slugging this year, 327 uh, team average, which is the highest um, amongst the guys. And uh, he's got a 414 on base, which is really good numbers. Um, another guy that, you know, stands out to me, would have to be someone like uh, you know Ben Met, or I'm sorry uh, Nolan Souza who uh, is hitting 315 this year seven homers 24 ribbies 671 slugging which is by far the highest on this team so um, it's gonna be seriously it's gonna be really interesting they've got a ton of good offensive guys on this team they've got you know five guys that are you know hitting above 300 this year and you know batting averages and everything but it's but it's a, it's a good number to look at to see you know how are you hitting this year. Um, but again, there's no easy outs on this team. It does remind me of a and a little bit um, just because they have a, a lot of all around good guys. But I don't think and I could be wrong saying this. Who knows what happens this weekend? But I don't think they have the, the big power bat that can go out there. And you like it's it's not like a Jack Caglione or, um, no. you know, not necessarily. Like they have no, guys that a- can do it right. They have I mean, I think six guys I counted that are that have over five home runs, something like that. Um so, I mean, they have guys that can do it. I was thinking it reminds me a little bit more of Vandy, right, where it's just a little bit more spread out the board. Um, now, obviously, this team's batting average and, and slugging is a little bit better than Vandy's. But, I mean, I don't know. I, in terms of power, I, I think, it, you know, they're, they're, they've got guys that can hit the long ball, sure, but um, certainly not one of their MOs. Jag, I like what you said about, um, you know, Arkansas playing on the road. I think, you know, they're not as battle-tested on the road or in neutral site games. Um, so we'll see. I think, you know, Founders Park is a blender to walk into. Um, you know, you've got everyone chirping and everything like that. It's it's a home weekend. It starts. It's a big home weekend, obviously, too, with the spring game as well on Saturday. So it's going to be a really, really, really tough place to play this weekend, as I fully expect everyone to be out um, in, in supporting um, Gamecock baseball this weekend. But, yeah, I, I think, you know, obviously the, the, the crowd at, at Founders Park is going to make things hard. And, you know, I think if you can get past the the first day, if, if you will, um, if you're South Carolina for, for hitting wise, find a way to get to Arkansas's ace. Um, you know, I think the series will, will end up in your favor. Right. Um, you know, because I like we said, Jack, I think, you know, game one dictates a lot of the series is in the SEC. Um, and so if you can start fast um, on Friday night, I think, you know, things will certainly go your way this weekend. But I mean, we'll see. It's you really do have to start fast. And then I liked your your point also. I mean, we we make it every week, but it's 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 always good to bring up. You do have to play good in baseball, right? You you can't be throwing the ball away, um, and, and no errors, anything like that. You you have to be able to make plays, trust the guy next to you, um, and really keep things clean. No no extra base runners and, and stuff like that. I mean, pitching obviously too. Um, no base on balls. You gotta gotta watch the walks because that'll add up. Um, and especially with a team like Arkansas, like their numbers. They get on base, right? So um, that's it's one thing to watch for sure. Yeah, totally. And jumping into this pitching staff, and I like the points you made there. Um, obviously, everything for Arkansas starts with Hagen Smith, who is absolutely incredible. Like I said before, he will end up being a top ten pick in the MLB draft. Whoever gets him is going to be a you know set up for the future. He's a you know, big left handed pitcher. High strikeout, low walk kind of guy, 89 strikeouts this year, just a 17 walks. And I think there was a game earlier in the season. I, I can't remember who it was against, but it was like – I think it was in Arlington uh, where the Rangers play. It was like one of those neutral site games earlier in the year against a good opponent. He had, he struck out like 17 guys. So 
hopefully for South Carolina's sake, a team that strikes out a ton, in my opinion, uh, doesn't you know run into that sort of issue this weekend. That's the number one thing with Facey Hagen Smith is okay. If you're going to strike out a ton, how are you going to go out there and beat him? Because he hasn't lost a game yet this year. He's seven and zero. 1.53 ERA in nine starts, and he's got two shutouts this season. So he's a very good pitcher, keeps the ball in the ballpark. Teams are batting just 138 against him. So no one's been able to solve him. Is it almost like a Paul Skeen situation last year where LSU comes in, you know, yes. national championship level team, Paul Skeens comes in, no one's able to beat him, and then South Carolina goes out there and you know, whips him up a little bit? Same we'll field. see. Well, it, it does have that same feel. And this the, is a a little story. bit of the same feel in the lead up. And, and Lynn, we, we get your we, – after we break down Arkansas, we'll, we'll get you one second. Because they did – there. we we talked about the pitching staff and, and the rotation, and we'll, we'll go back to that in a second. But, yeah. No, I, I think the lead has the same feel, right? Same time of year, right? Big, big, big prospect on the it's mound. Huge um, yep. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, with Hagen, I mean, look, I mean, just – he's filthy. I mean, how – if, if no one's been able to beat him yet, what, what, what makes this thing South Carolina is going to do it? I do think South Carolina's offense is getting good, getting high at the right time, and it all starts with a guy like Ethan Petrie, who has been swinging the bat well. And then, um, you know, just from there, I mean, like I said before, Messina leadoff, Tippett's hitting well. Uh, Dalton Reeves is swinging the bat well. Uh, just you have a lot of guys that are swinging it right at the right time. They're also being aggressive, which is another thing that I noticed over the weekend is that, you know, normally South Carolina likes to work the count. Uh, we'll build up a guy's pitch count until he's out of the game by the fifth inning. And that's a good strategy. And I maybe you use that against a guy like Smith. But if he's leaving you fastballs over the middle of the plate, you have to swing at them. Right. And I think that's something South Carolina did an excellent job of against Florida. And that's why you were able to see them rough up guys like, uh, you know, Brandon Neely and, um, you know, a little bit Jack Caglione a little bit, but nothing too you know, dire there. But I think the offense, the way they were able to output runs um, in the early going was very good. Um, but after Smith, I mean, it's, it's not like it gets any easier. Um, I Last weekend against Alabama, the, you know, Arkansas had started Brady Tiger, who's you know, two and a half ERA this year, has a shutout under his belt and, uh, you know, 52 walks to 21 strikeouts. Uh, it's not as great as, you know, um, yeah, yeah, you know, not as good as Hagen Smith, but still, still, it's good. And then um, they did start Mason Molina, uh, who, um, you know, amongst the starters does have the, the highest ERA out there. But again, he's still a solid pitcher, three and a half ERA, 65 strikeouts, 21 walks. This is an Arkansas team that's going to strike out a ton of batters this weekend. And, again, like I said before, it really comes down to what South Carolina going to do when they get on base. Are they going to be able to you know, play a small ball, drive runs in, that sort of thing? Or are they going to leave runners stranded in scoring position with high strikeout numbers? That's where I think this game is going to really be decided. Yeah, most definitely. No, I think some good stuff there. Pretty good breakdown. Uh, so, yeah, finally getting to Lynn's um, comment. Appreciate you tuning in, Lynn. Um, and no worries that you're late. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> you, you're joining us. But so the pitching rotation for this weekend, we just fell over it. Um, but so here, Kingston rolled it out this afternoon. Um, Jack, you were obviously at the presser, but um, rolling out with Roman Kimball on Friday, um, Eli Jones on Saturday, and then TBA for Sunday. Um, pretty, pretty good um, analysis of it. I mean, I think. You know, Roman Kimball kind of gives you the best spark, the most energy um, on Friday. And then, mm -hmm. obviously, Eli Jones giving you um, the most length. But, Jack, obviously, a quick, another quick down of the rotation. Yeah. And um, also, I, I mean, I'll, I'll add it, too, real quick. Um, how, sure. like, how, how are they going to go about attacking this this Darkens offense? Yeah, that's that's a great question. And I think with Roman, like you said, it, it really does come down to confidence and energy and command. And I think he does command the zone very well. Like I said, I think – I don't know. I mean, look, this Arkansas team does not strike out a ton. So you're going to have to deal with them putting the ball in play. And it really comes down to what your defense is able to do. We saw this against AM a few weeks ago where South Carolina didn't play its cleanest baseball and it led to some you know mistakes and runs. Um, for the Aggies in those games. And then you see, you know, over the weekend against Florida, I think they played pretty well defensively. So we know Arkansas is going to put the ball in play, but it really comes down to what South Carolina is going to do with it. And I think that's probably how you go about attacking them. You got to really command the zone. 
you can't be giving up free passes and stuff because this Arkansas team will uh, take advantage of those mistakes. But I think, like I said before, uh, and for those of y'all that you know weren't you know in the in the chat before listening or whatever, um, I think South Carolina's got a really good rotation run, to run out there. And again, I guess like we said before, they're not punting Friday. That's it's not at all what's happening. Yeah, no. It's just Eli Jones gives you the best chance to win a game that you probably need to win badly on Saturday. And I think Roman Kimball does well as well. You know, he's got you know really good stuff, some of the best stuff on the team, um, from what Mark Kingston said today. And then Sunday, I mean, I don't know who they're gonna throw Sunday, but again, it, it's gonna probably come down to Tyler Pitzer. Matthew Becker or Ty Good, whichever one has really not been used over the weekend, that's probably what they'll end up doing. And it all comes down to matchups uh, ultimately. But, um, you know, at some point you got to go with who's you know best available and we'll see what happens. So it'll be interesting to see. But another thing I did like that Kingston mentioned is, you know, mm-hmm. he's not going to shy away from using the best guys he needs to out of the bullpen yeah. to get the job done. If he needs if he needs to use Matthew Becker in a lefty-lefty matchup, you, you can bet he'll use him, all right? And – if that means Becker can't pitch over the week on Sunday, it, that I mean, look, at least you're eight, you're trying to get the wins that you really need to in the early going. So you don't want to be in a position where you lose the first two games of the series and you didn't try your hardest to make sure you win those games um, as best as possible. But I, I do think South Carolina has got the right idea of what to do. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I agree. I think, you know, if, if you're the South Carolina pitching staff, right, you need to hit your spots. If you're going to go after the black, um, you know, really hit. Um, and I think, you know, against a team that is so, you know, based on, you know, just putting them all in play and then, you know, trusting the guy behind him. Some kind of your hitting style uh, just with a little less pop in the lineup. Um, I, but, yeah, you got to hit your spots um, and, and be ready to challenge these hitters, right? Um, from from the jump, I think you know you can't shy away from it. That's how you you know get get beat, guys on base, and that just adds up and it turns into a long afternoon and evening. Uh, so I don't think you can shy away from from really anything if you're South Carolina's pitching staff uh, doing this weekend for sure. Definitely, definitely, and it's again it's going to be a huge series, but I think we're both looking forward to it. Um, it should be a good one, but. Uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, look, Arkansas is a dangerous team, very solid all around, but um, it's just, you know, it's it's going it's to be tough. And South Carolina is really going to be a great game. But I think they definitely have uh, the, the momentum in their favor. They're playing good b- ball at the right time, and then they also have the ability to, you know, take advantage of the home field um, with what they've got going on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jack, we've reached a point in our show where we got to talk about our sponsors really quickly. First off, our good friends over at Liberty Tax. Tax anxiety is an uncertain feeling you get right before Jack, but you don't have to go through all in the tax team at Liberty Tax in Irmo, Lexington, and Columbia. We'll walk you through the process, clear up any confusion, and guarantee you'll get the biggest possible refund money back. It's tax time. If you're in a hurry for your refund, call in the tax team at Liberty Tax. They're fast, accurate, and guaranteed. On the other hand, if you think you might be owing Uncle Sam, talk to Liberty Tax. Make sure you're not paying more than you should owe. They'll find every possible deduction for you. Locally owned and operated, staffed by tax professionals from your neighborhood. Open 9 to 9 on weekdays and 9 to 5 on Saturdays. Service options. Start through the Liberty Tax mobile app or through the desktop portal. Make an appointment or just walk in. Give a call to upload your tax documents. And when you come in, your, your return will be reviewed and signed. Give them a call on your screen right now. And for those listening, 803-462-5576. Once again, 803-462-5576 for all of your tax needs this tax season. Jack? Yeah, and our second sponsor, the man right above us, is Mr. Clint Hammond. In need of help with your mortgage, call our good friend Clint Hammond at the Movement Mortgage Network. He's been in the mortgage industry since 2003, which allows him to help everyone from the first-time home buyer to the complicated and complex jumbo buyer. Whether you're looking to purchase a new home or refinance, nothing is more important than a well-thought-out financial strategy that comes with five-star customer service. He's even helped out our very own Wes Mitchell and former Gamecock quarterback, Mr. Perry Orth, with their mortgages. So you can give our guy, Clint, a call at the number above, 803-771-6933. Again, the number to call for for Clint Hammond of the Movement Mortgage Network is 803-771-6933. Right above us. Yeah, absolutely. So those are sponsors today. Um, Before we get out of here, obviously, as we do every week, um, we give our predictions, our picks um, for for what's going to go down at Founders Park this weekend. Um, and so Jack, I mean, who you got? 
I'm buying. <laughs> you know, I, I I've been buying into the uh, the South Carolina Kool Aid a little bit, and that's not because I'm a homer or anything. I care less. Um, I just do call it for what it is. I think South Carolina's going to win two out of three this weekend. I think the rotation is set up nicely to where, look, if you lose game one, you bounce right back and you can win game two with Eli Jones on the mound. And then Sunday, I definitely think whoever they throw out there, Ty Good, Pitzer, Becker, they all give you a good chance to win. And that's not to say they can't sweep the series, but uh, Hagen Smith is very hard to hit. And that's just that's just you know how it is. Um, can South Carolina overcome their strikeout struggles a little bit and – you know, driving runs when they need to, that's going to be the key. And if they do that, I think they're in a good position to win this series, no, undoubtedly. What you got, Joe? Yeah, most certainly. Um, and I, I think my pick for this weekend, I, I also am taking the game, Cox. Um, I think, you know, I think they have a better chance of winning Friday night. I don't know. I, I just – I like it. And I, I don't know if that's if that's bad that I'm feeling this way about Friday night's game. But I think they think this year they gets two out of three. Um, and then obviously, I, I don't know, have the games gotten officially moved back? Because I know there's some weather um, yeah. on Sunday that, that might wind up a, a doubleheader on Saturday, potentially. So, so I, I, I've i gotten a few questions about that now. And truthfully, I haven't gotten any word on what the deal is yet. Uh, nothing official has come out yet. I'm sure we'll know more later. What, In my opinion, what it probably does come down to is you have the spring game Saturday night. So how is that like going to affect things? Are you going to, the first game is, you know, Saturday's game is at three o'clock. So could you potentially play a game at like, you know, 12, 12 PM or something noon, maybe like 1130 and try to get that, you know, one of those games in first and then play at three o'clock right after. I don't know. It's a little tough because the timing of the first game is a little weird. So if I had, I mean, I, it, I don't know. They probably will end up playing a doubleheader on Saturday if the weather is what it's supposed to be from what, um, everyone keeps talking about, but I mean, we'll have to see. Um, I mean, it could it, honestly, speaking of like this series, very feeling like very much like LSU last year with Paul Skeens. No, I mean, that's what I'm it, thinking. It, didn't one of the games of that series get uh, yes. canceled due to yeah. weather? So maybe we're in a situation where it's kind of like that again. Obviously, you want to play all three games and stuff to determine a yeah. real winner here. But um, yeah, I'm telling you though, tomorrow, dude, are, are you going to be there? Tomorrow's game, or yes, or I will be in attendance tomorrow. Yeah, dude, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be electric. It's gonna be nuts. Yeah, it's it's gonna be field. crazy. I'm assuming it'll be a packed house. I don't know about Saturday and Sunday and stuff, but I can tell you tomorrow definitely should be a good crowd. The weather's heating up. The ball should be flying out of the yard, if anything. And I think this is a real chance for South Carolina to kind of not get. I mean, I, I think they're kind of back on the map a little bit, back in good good standing and faith and all that. But tomorrow really is a chance to go out there and be, you know, throw a big punch at Arkansas and go from there. And I think the energy is going to be high. The emotions are going to be through the roof. We'll see what happens. But I think South Carolina's got a real good chance to go out there and show what they've got. Yeah. I mean, if you get to Hagen Smith, man, that is one heck of a, a punch Crazy. in the mouth. Um, if, if you can get to Arkansas and I mean, their ace, cause I mean, that's, they built this season kind of around him and his success, um, in game ones. Right. So, I don't know, man. It's I like I said. I think there's that feeling is kind of in the air this weekend in, in Columbia. This baseball team's been playing well, but who knows, right? Um, we we'll we'll see. Um, but sh should be a pretty good weekend. Everyone make it out. Um, to to the at least the game Friday if you can, Saturday, Sunday, um, whenever. Um, uh, make Founders Park a, a pretty good atmosphere this weekend. I'm looking forward to it for sure. But um, Jack, anything else before we get out of here? No, oh, man, that'll do it. Um, you know, just be sure to stay tuned to GamecockCentral.com. Um, I'll be at all three games this weekend, provide the normal coverage as usual. And then, um, yeah, we'll also have football coverage this weekend with uh, the spring game. So it'll be a good time, good weekend. And, uh, yeah, be sure to be locked into GC.com and uh, for all your Gamecock athletic uh, needs and all that. So, Joe, happy to have you back yeah. on the show, man. So. Appreciate it. Good to be back as always. And yeah, don't forget to like subscribe on, on YouTube, the Gamecock Central YouTube channel. It's the best um, you know, for all our shows, um, Yuva's shows, Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and then obviously my show, like the walkthrough, um, you can get all that and then hit the little bell icon next to it. Um, and then you can be notified when any of us go live. Um, so you can be sure not to miss us. But appreciate everyone tuning in on this fine Thursday evening. You'll catch some sunshine while you still can um, and, and enjoy your weekend.